stock motorcycle fans, welcome to Australia. Welcome to the Thunder 400. Welcome to the biggest drag race in the Western Hemisphere. It is the 52nd annual Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals from Willowbank Raceway in Brisbane, Australia. We're gonna take a close look at this exciting category. In the States, you know it as Pro Stock Motorcycle. Naturally aspirated, high horsepower, big motor drag bikes. In Australia, it's called Pro Bike. And we're gonna meet all the players involved and give you full event coverage. So stay with us, it's gonna be exciting. Some great personalities, some great talents, some great tuners and builders in the land down under. We're also gonna talk with California Katie Sullivan who flew over to battle the Australians. But first, let's kick it down to the president, Maurice hey, Allen. Ladies and gentlemen, here we are with the CEO of IHRA Australia, Maurice Allen, who we saw at race Pro Stock Motorcycle back in the States. Maurice, what are we in for here in Australia? Jack, I'm not sure if you realize what you've got yourself into, but this is the biggest drag race outside of the USA. And you're here, it's winter, it's June, you're in Brisbane, which is beautiful, sunny Queensland. We've got over 500 competitors. There'll be 50,000 spectators here over the course of the weekend. You are going to see record upon record smashed. You'll see elevation numbers here that only you guys back home in America will dream of. You'll see sea level numbers. You'll see records being broken left, right and centre. You'll see six second pro stock bikes, five second top fuel bikes. Wow. Maybe the first 200 mile an hour pro stock motorcycle pass. You'll see three second top fuel dragsters. We have got a bunch of entertainment for our fans this weekend. Can't wait. How would you describe the drag bike scene over here to the folks of the States? Look, the drag bike scene here is strong. Uh, this is a great time of the year, typically. Everybody wants to run this race. Everybody wants the gold Christmas tree that's on offer. That's, that's kind of the, the, the great, um, the holy grail of drag racing in Australia is a gold Christmas tree. So everybody wants to win one of those. It's strong, we have 50 bikes in one of our bracket, uh, like our, our, our modified bike bracket, which is a DYO class. Um, our, our Pro Stock Motorcycle class has one of its best fields ever, including Katie Sullivan, who's all the way here from the USA. California Katie. California Katie's here, she's in the house. We've got Mitch Brown's come over to watch, but you got Chris Matheson on the verge of five seconds. Jay Upton on the verge of five seconds. You've got Competition Bikes, which is a combination of um, nitrous, turbo, swing arm, wheelie bar style bikes, GS, KZs, all in the mix, and they're quick. We've also got a class known as Extreme Bike. So as you know, in the States, it's a long, long uh, swing arm deal, you know, um, radial type tire, altered style bike. These things are running, smashing out low sevens at 200 miles an hour, pass after pass. So man, we have got some of the best motorcycle drag racing here this weekend. Thank you for having me, man. I appreciate it. Ready for the show. We got the bag here. We got the CEO. I got a question for you. How in the heck did you let Mitch Brown into this country? Oh my gosh, top I snuck in. I snuck in when nobody well, was looking. Well, they say everything happens in threes, right? California, Katie, yep. Jack Corpella, and Mitch Brown. Sounds Mitch to me like Brown. there's something going on here with our customs department. That clearly somebody wasn't using that stamp. Congratulations. The whole, the whole country's going to pot now the Americans are here. You're lucky they haven't built a wall around yeah, Australia I know, yet. No. Hey, good to see you here, man. Yeah. What are you what are you doing here? So I'm here with um, Trevor Burrell and Glenn Wooster. You know, they run the Monster Race Products Billet Cylinder Head. So they uh, were, were generous enough to offer me an opportunity to come over. Been over for uh, since last weekend at the warm up on Sunday. So I got to see some racing then. Got to see a lot of the beautiful country. Had a wrestling match with a drop bear yesterday. Oh I my. won. So uh, good to hear that. Wonderful. Happy you're here, Jack. I'm looking forward to our adventure. It's going to be fun. Thanks for having us. I just got off the plane, wanted to explore the racetrack a little bit. I love doing that. I love going to new tracks. Was immediately impressed with the displays, the food vendors, the entertainment value. And here's something that really caught my attention. There's a jumbotron facing the food vendors. Genius idea, I cannot believe, has not come to the States yet. Put a big screen right in front of the area where they sell all the food so the spectators can come grab something to eat and not miss any of the action. 
It's time to head towards the tower. Reminded me a little bit of Rockingham Dragway, one of my favorite tracks. Taking a look at the Pro Stock Motorcycle of California, Katie Sullivan, all the way over in Australia. Welcome down under, Katie. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. We're a long ways from home, but um, we've been dreaming about this for a lot of months, so we're way excited to be here. I see your motorcycle's got a brand new wrap on it. Tell it's me got, about it. It's got a beautiful four square group here helping us out they're the whole reason that we were able to come down here and uh, they've been so great to us everybody here has treated us great and uh, we couldn't be more uh, excited to come here and represent excellent and i see fiance slash nitro harley superstar is in the house he's in the house was it fun to make the trip with your fiance it was fun to make the trip but i think uh, both of us aren't too used to sitting around so we got a bit antsy on the plane so i'm not sure we're great travelers but we're here and uh, we're uh, ready to go racing excellent what was the process like in terms of actually getting your bike here that seems so complicated to me from california to australia how difficult was that it was it was kind of complicated. I mean, it, it took some time and a lot of planning. Um, we're very fortunate. We had a lot of people help us out, especially for Square Group and uh, just a lot of people that stepped up to give us a hand. Gavin with Circle and um, it's, been, it's been great. I mean, it really touched my heart, all the people that helped. So yes, it was complicated. It was hard, but it was worth uh, every uh, ounce of our time. So we're excited. With a bike this valuable, how about, how about the packing, the bubble wrap, the foam? How do you protect this bike? There was quite a bit of that, um, but in all honesty, red we, I drove it down to where he lives and we packaged it up there at the Yoshi Mare shop and um, you know we just took a lot of care to do it a lot of time and then uh, you send her off and uh, hope that it makes. Excellent. Well, speaking of good things, I know that a couple months ago we were hoping you were going to come over here and have a chance to run the first ever six second pass in Australia for Pro Stock Bikes. Luke beat you to it just by a couple weeks. Does that change your excitement at all, or are you still just as pumped? You know, it, it doesn't change anything for us. It was, I'm, I was happy to see Luke do that. It, it was great for him, and it's great for this sport. Um, we're just excited to be here. I mean, this is the opportunity of a lifetime for us, and um, you know, we, we want to come out here and have fun and represent Foursquare Group and uh, get to meet a whole new group of people and go racing, which is what we love doing. You're still going to try to attack that six-second run the same way you would have? We would love to make a six-second pass out here for all the spectators and the fans. Actually, we get a run. Uh, hopefully, we'll get to run here soon, but we'll run against Luke in the first round, so maybe we can do side-by-side -side sixes. That would be pretty cool. What's Luke's best? What did he do? A 690? He went 690, yep. I, be I believe it was 690. Okay, so... What's your all-time best? I, I've been 686 um, in Sonoma. We went that at 197. So okay. hopefully we can repeat something close to that out here. Is it is it possible? Are the conditions comparable? Um, anything's possible, but uh, you know it's drag racing, and uh, unfortunately we don't get to do it a lot. So you know sometimes I'm a little rusty. Sometimes we have a few problems with the bike, but um, you know I, I feel confident. I have a great group of guys here helping me, and. Um, you know, we came here to have fun, so we're going to do our best and um, put everything we got to the track and just see what happens. Good luck to you. I'd love to see a, love to see a 680 pop up on that scoreboard. I think you can do it. So. Yeah, we would love that. Yeah, I mean, uh, I miss my dad. He wasn't able to come with us, so um, yeah, hopefully we can do good for him. There you go, California Katie. Good luck. Thank you. Just going to try to make some history over here in Australia. What a unique and fun experience for California Katie. Rhett Lockheed, Katie's fiance, Greg Justice, her brother, the entire team uh, to come over to Australia and battle some of the finest racers here after all of the NHRA experience that Katie has. This is the machine of Glenn Wooster. Australian Pro Stock Motorcycle, or as they call it, Down Under Pro Bike. This beautiful machine belongs to Glenn Wooster, a talented rider. Nice to meet you right, and your yeah. crew. And we, I also see we have Mr. Mitch Brown helping out. Mitch, you know a lot about this program. Do some introductions for me over here, please. Yeah, I'm happy to sneak in here. I don't want to steal what they've done, but this is Mr. Trevor Burrell. Nice to meet you, sir. Trevor's yeah, been right. racing, uh, racing, tuning, building, pro bikes, all kinds of bikes here in Australia for since 1932. <laughs> a long time. Yeah, and obviously yeah. Glenn is the rider, 2016 Australian Pro Bike Champion. How about that? Yeah. Unofficially, 196 miles an hour, right? Yep, yep. And we. Point eight. Wow. Not, that, not that you're counting or keeping track. And sir, your role on the team? Yeah, Clint. Excellent. What's your role? 
Oh, we, we're just the main sponsor for the bike. Oh, yes. very cool. So Clint, yeah. helped more than these. Katie, Clint helped to bring Katie's bike over and spawn is the primary sponsor of the bike. Thank you so much for that. That's not uh, it's not like shipping these bikes down the street. California oh, to Australia is quite a haul. So oh, we were explaining to Mitch and Katie uh, yesterday that you know, if, if people are willing to come halfway around the world, we're willing to help them out. You know, it, it's a big effort by them to get to where they are now. And we're just willing to help you know well thank you for bringing over california katie and i guess thank you somewhat for bringing over mitch yeah no, i'm just kidding we love we love <laughs> he's not home yet though we love mitch mitch this program is special man tell me a little bit about it yeah here. so i feel very fortunate to get a chance to work with them you know trevor had originally bought one of the original monster heads or glenn and trevor did and so then now um they're on a, a second version of that uh, right now glenn's leading the points here at this race uh, so the championship is at stake so they're just trying to make sure they can make some good runs and end up with the championship but as you know we've got at least four if not five bikes here that could run a six second pass this weekend um, so it's going to be really exciting for pro bike glenn it all comes to a head here this is the final round of the season this is your version of the world finals how are you feeling yeah no pretty good actually i've been ducking off for a game of golf and some mountain bike riding and uh I'm not allowed to tell him that, but I, it's all good. And no, I felt pumped. And even the ride the other day to get out and have a walk around, loosen up, and it felt really good in the top end. So now I just can't wait to get out there again. How would you compare pro bike to pro stock motorcycle in the United States? Oh, look, obviously I haven't been over yet to have a look, but um, yeah, here it's it's a tough class and yeah. it's a lot of dollars and I guess it's the same over there and everyone wants to have a crack. It's a hard class to stay in. you really got to perform to be at the level. Yeah. Well, I see the same amount of passion that I see in the States over here in Australia and we have, what, nine bikes this weekend? That's right. That's yeah, an impressive yeah. turnout for, for pro stock motorcycle. Heck, NHRA just had, I think, 15 motorcycles in Chicago. So to have nine here, it's pretty and, dang impressive. Everyone knows how much work goes into these things. These guys, what they do here, and I know Clint said he didn't do a lot, but he does, he's on the tools too. But it takes everyone to make it a team effort and get them down the track, that's for sure. Here's one thing I gotta ask about. In between the frame rails, we can't see it through this beautiful wrap, but monster heads, not legal in NHRA Pro Stock, legal over here in Australia. There's been so much talk. Guys like Jerry Savoie said, I want a four valve head to compete with the Harleys. What do you think, Mitch? Well, you know, there are also legal in Europe, and we have a few guys running over there. Um, I make the, the cylinder head, but really it's the guys like Trevor, and he has a, a guy here, Luke Berry, that does the porting for them. I mean, they're showing what kind of power that they can make here. They do not have the advantage of the NHRA tracks that, that we have in the States. Right. That 196 mile an hour run would have been number eight on the mile an hour qualifying at Chicago. And I think it was only a half a mile an hour short of being the number three fastest mile an hour. So they're making the power. There's no doubt about it. And I mean, let's just off the top of your head with the advantage of U.S. tracks, that's that's probably worth at least half a tenth, right? Yeah, and I think Glenn might have shut that one off just a tiny bit early just to tease everybody how fast it really is. So we'll, uh, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a fabulous job. I can't wait to see it in action. So other than the monster head, are there any big differences between this machine and a pro stock motorcycle that we'd see over in the states well i know that uh they built the chassis here trevor i think his design with another guy that he works with sam over here they do run a little bit different fuel here um, what kind of fuel you guys run we run uh psx2 which is an oxygenated vp fuel <laughs> so they are running an oxygen this fuel. is the last meeting that we could run it uh as of first of july we have to go to an unleaded fuel so it's uh Basically, we all start again after this meeting, unfortunately. Wow. Well, I know we're going to get the attention of some guys back home because it's so funny. When I talked to Jerry Savoie, the former champ, earlier this year, he's really mad. He thinks they're down on horsepower. The Suzuki's about 20 to 30 horsepower. He, the two things he asked for, four-valve head or oxygenated fuel. So, in your opinion, is that two big difference makers? Yeah, well, I, I think well, we haven't really run enough. We run a lot of oxygenated fuel the last part of the season last year and the first part of this season but because the regulations are uh, phasing the leaded fuel out no one was carrying any stock so we had to change fuel between the last third round and this round to basically finish the championship but uh, I do believe when we died on it, it there is a definite improvement in the fuel wow what do you think Mitch worth a lot 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know because I don't have the experience with that. I run that stuff that makes your ears bleed, <laughs> but I'm impressed with what they're doing. So I'm learning a lot as well, Jack. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much for giving me a glimpse inside your team. We wish you the best of luck. Any final thoughts here as you prepare for what could be a championship run for you this weekend? Yeah, no, look, I'm just hoping the weather improves for us and we can get down the track. And I know we've got everyone's support, so it's going to be a good weekend. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, good, good luck to you guys. Cheers. Thank you. See if they can get it done. A big thanks to Glenn Wooster and team for running the CycleDrag.com decal. I told you they're good luck. Mitch Brown having a good time. Glenn Wooster, one of the odds-on favorites to win the championship this weekend. Who will win it all? The season culminates here at Willowbank. We'll bring you the whole event, but let's meet some more. All right, Mitch, so here we are in Australia. It's probably nice for you to escape your fellow competitors. You don't have to think about racing. You don't have to think about any of your rivals. Yeah. Wait, wait a What in that? Mitch, what, what am I seeing over here? It's like the land of Larry. <laughs> Can't escape him. We got Larry McBride shirts even in Australia. Gotta love it. Let's meet Scott White, driver of this fast Suzuki. Taking a look at another beautiful Australian pro bike with the TL1000 Suzuki bodywork. A fresh wrap, looking good. This one belongs to Mr. Scott White. How you doing, Scott? Fantastic. Mate. A couple quick questions about you. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from Darwin originally, just moved to Queensland now, so uh, I'm, I'm down close to here. How far is that from the racetrack? Oh, not far. Before I was driving thousands of kilometres to get Ooh. to any, anything from Darwin. You know, uh, four days drive to anywhere from there, so now I'm a couple of hours away. It's How ridiculous. many years uh, have you been racing? I've been racing since 1990 uh, in Pro Bike. Uh, saw George Bryce over here at one stage. Or, uh, raced in every track in the country pretty much and uh, we've just had to have a bit of a break in the last couple of years so this is out for the first time in three years uh, we, was, we were running a small 1570cc four valve it was an OEM head and uh, now with the change of weight brakes we've gone to a two valve vortex head now 1755cc a little bit bigger and uh, really looking forward to getting out there again after this break. Tell me a little bit about your motorcycle. I know you just said that you made the switch to the two valve. What other defining features do you have on this pro bike? Uh, really, we're, we're going along the same sort of lines as uh, Luke Crowley has. We're, um, we've, we've gone away from electric oil pump back to a mechanical oil pump. We're running 50 uh, mil electrons. We're um, basically relearning the whole thing I, you know going from that sort of style and oem head to this sort of thing i'm looking at the size of the cam lobes and thinking wow how does this all work what's your best et 720 184 miles an hour that was on the little motor so i reckon this thing's gonna pull out a, a good number once i get it sorted I, if i can ride it as well as i used to i think it's just a matter of twisting this and letting go of that and we'll see how we go what's your goal my goal i definitely want to run a six you know, now oh, that Luke's, wow. Luke's run that, you know, I think it'll be like Roger Bannister's, you know, minute mile. And once someone does it, it's achievable. And, uh, you know, with all the help that Luke's putting into it, um, Luke's been really generous with his help. And, uh, yeah, we're learning a lot real fast. And I reckon, you know, sixes are not out of the question for a bunch of us here. Good luck to you. Can't wait to see you run here in a little bit. Thanks. Pro bike in Australia, the competition heating up. Here's one of the best. My man, Ryan, how you doing, Ryan? Yeah, good, Jack. How Could you, you please pronounce your last name again? Because I- uh, Ryan Learmont. I, I, excellent, I didn't want to attempt that one. Ryan, I've heard a lot about you. I know you were very close to the six second zone. The race here in Australia to get to the sixes was hotly contested. How deep did you go before Luke got it done? Um, we ran a 707 with an early shutoff just after Luke ran the 690, so um, there's still still a lot left in it, but we're just working on it slowly, trying to get it there. We've only been racing this sort of setup for the last sort of year, basically a year, somewhere around there. And um, yeah, so Luke's been at it for a while, and he's a, he's a smart guy, and knows his stuff, knows how to ride too. Sure does. Tell me a little bit about your bike. Um, so. Yeah, it's a TL, as you see. Um, we've only got fiberglass body, not carbon fiber or anything like that. Um, it's an 1872cc um, 
Rhett Lockie bottom end, built crankshaft, um, all that sort of stuff. Rhett Lockie did all the bottom end on it. Um, it's all monster race products. Oh, built, monster. Yeah, billet four valve top end. There you go. Um, yeah, it's sort of George Bryce, I think, um, did all the porting and all that sort of stuff. We bought it from Star Racing um, originally, and then we, we took the head off our old motor and we put it onto this motor with Rhett crankshaft in it. Um, yeah, and it's got plenty left in it. We run 187 mile an hour. Um, at 7.07 with an early shut off and um, I'm 640 pounds so we're pretty heavy uh, I'll weigh a fair bit so in the 80 kilos ranges <laughs> 80 sure. kilos so yeah, um, so are you uh, are you on a tough diet just like all the American pro stock motorcycle racers? I am at the moment. I hate starving myself, but you have to. <laughs> Always got to watch your weight, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm over six foot tall, and so and I'm like 87 kilos, and um, yeah, we do the best I can, we, like we can with the weight that we got. But we're gonna we're gonna upgrade next season. We're gonna carbon fiber body, and um, yeah, that'll take some of the weight out of it and get us down to where we need to be. Very cool. I see you got the Larry Spider Man McBride T-shirt on. Do you you follow what goes on over in the United States? Yeah, sure do. Um, me and my family came over in um, uh, 2017 and watched Larry go 561. So oh, you were there for that? There, and that's so I met Mitch as well, which is awesome. You know, and that was yeah, highlight of my life, pretty, pretty much, because we, I've always loved watching him, you know, watching him race and that. And so to see him go his quickest time while we were there was awesome. Well, that's cool, and I know Larry's going to appreciate that. That's a run you can see on CycleDrag.com. Now, wouldn't it be cool if we get your first six up on CycleDrag.com? What do you think is the key to running a six this weekend is going to be? Um, if the rain stays away, there's one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, just, just some more laps. We're just getting data as we go, and um, we're just sort of fine-tuning little bits here and little bits there, and, um, yeah, hopefully we should get to it. And that by the end of the weekend. That's our goal for the weekend. Um, we're running second in the championship, trying to chase Glenn Worcester down. Um, so there's a mathematical chance that we could win it, but like we're not here for that. We just want to we want to run a six. That's that's our aim for the weekend. Excellent. Well, good luck to you. And I see you got something else over here. I don't I don't want to self promote too much, but <laughs> I just will remind you that when Larry went that 561, he had those stickers on. So I'll definitely put them on. Let's get them on and get you into sixes. Definitely. Good luck, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Watch out for Ryan Learmont. He's got a chance to sneak in there and steal that championship. Plus, he's got the lucky CycleDrag.com decals and the lucky Spider-Man McBride shirt. Mitch continuing to have a good time with all of his monster buddies. Taking a look at Pro Stock Bike 1710 over here in Australia. It's a beautiful machine. How you doing, sir? What's your name? Daniel Rebnock. How many years have you been racing? Uh, since I was 18, so... Yeah, 20. Wow, where are you from? Uh, Emerald. Excellent, best ET. 7.24. Excellent, tell me about your motorcycle here. Well, it's got a brand new engine in it for this leading. This what, what type of engine do you got? Uh, Vortex. Oh, you see, you got the Rick Ward Vortex. Yeah. Wow, how did you end up choosing that one? Uh, just what was for sale. Sure. So we, had to, we had to step it up keep up with these other big boys well that's that's what i wanted to talk to you about things are really changing over here with the pro stock motorcycles dipping into the sixes what's yes. it going to take to get there uh more horsepower and more tuning and more seat time there you go you confident that you're onto it right now uh yes we'll find out in the next hour <laughs> can't wait tell me a little bit about a little bit more about your bike what type of body is this Hayabusa body. Now that's something that's uh, pretty unique as well because I love the Hayabusa body. The late great Dave Schultz brought it to Pro Stock Motorcycle, but we see most guys going with the TL. Yes. Why do you stick with the Busa? Well, it was, we purchased this uh, five years ago and I had the Busa body on it. So, okay. Um, we stuck with it, but we are having a few issues with it moving around in the bottom end. So we've sorted out a few things and we've just got to test it and see what happens this weekend. Overall happy with the aero package though? The yeah, pretty much yeah. There's a few other little things we've got to, um, we're trying to catch up on, but we'll find that out. Excellent. What would make you happy this weekend? What number do you want to run? Um, 701. Seven. <laughs> hey, I thought you were going to say anything in the 70s. That's, that's ambitious yeah. though, 701. We, well, I wish you the best of luck. Anybody you like to thank? Uh, ABM, Craven Industries, all the sponsors. and. Everyone else in the tent, dad, brother, family, everyone. Good luck to you. Bye, mate. There you go. Let's get one more look at this motorcycle. It's beautiful. He's got the Rick Ward motor in it. Daniel going to be tough. Let's now meet the man who made history with the first six. 
Australian Pro Stock Motorcycle, and here is the man everybody's been talking about. Luke Crowley, I have to shake your hand. Uh, part of me is a little upset because you killed what was going to be a good story this weekend, but you did it uh, very deservedly so. You came in, you ran the first six-second run. Everybody thought it was going to happen this weekend. You did it a couple weekends ago, and you annihilated it with a 690. How'd you do that? Uh, well... You know, we've been trying for a while. We've tried over in the uh, NHRA and we've been trying here for a few years. And, um, you know, we ha had a little gremlin in the clutch and we've had it since I went to the NHRA. And then we come back and we've done homework. And, you know, I've got a good bunch of guys behind me back here in Australia uh, with a good, good brains. Uh, so I think, and we just were overlooking something. And um, mad thrash in Sydney and we, we come across the problem and we worked out how we could solve it temporarily um, to get out there for the last run in Sydney. We didn't expect it to go 690. We just hoped it went 10 something in the 60 foot. And um, yeah, we went out with 108, whatever, whatever else it ran down the racetrack. But um, what was your best prior to that? Uh, we went 700 in Pomona in 2015. Okay. So. How about your best in Australia prior to that? 704. 704. Okay. so. In my previous videos, I was saying that there may be about half a tenth difference between Australian tracks and the U.S. tracks that you run on with NHRA. Do you, do you believe in that? Uh, not really. Or do you like, think you can go just as quick here? I, I, you know, like I think we can run 70s here. Wow. Yeah, you know, like I, I don't think it's out of the question. Sure. You know, 108 and 60, if we can go 104, 103, like, you know, most other metric um, pro stock bikes in the world run. Um, you know, like just with those incrementals, if we go say 432 435 the half like you know a lot of a lot of the other guys in nhra you know the, the, the et will come you know like it'll be a run you know somewhere in the low 80s to a high 70 obviously i don't think it's going to go you know any quicker than that but i think it's well and truly possible if we get the conditions right this weekend um you know we're a little bit heavier than nhra you know, we're 15 pounds heavier than what uh we ran over there so okay. to have that weight on the bike and then also you know, obviously prove the 690 um, and look at the data and see that there's a lot more left in that data. Um, you know, that's, that's all potential. So. Tell me about your bike. What combination do we have here? So it's a uh, Vance & Hines headed, Rep Lockheed, uh, engineered, um, 1852cc. Wow. Uh, so this is the engine I used in Pomona in 2017. Uh, before that, we had a Vortex headed engine, which I actually believe is a better engine than this one. Uh, we heard a crankshaft with my own stupidity and um, unfortunately that engine's not here to use this weekend otherwise it'll be in there. We went 100 and nearly 196 mile an hour with that in Pomona. Wow. So it, it makes a lot of steam, you know, it's got a lot of grunt. It makes more grunt than this one, there's no doubt about that. But you, know, you can't go past the bands and hides that it is. Sure. How would you describe what it's like to ride this machine, especially at a track like this, Willow Bank, where here shutdown's a little bumpy and it's a downward slope? How would you describe that? Uh, not as bad as Pomona. It's short. Yeah, Pomona's a little yeah, and bumpy. Pomona's uh, rough, huh? Yeah, it's not nice. Uh, <laughs> this is a little bit nicer than that, but the track's not too bad. There is some bumps, you know, um, but it's, it's nothing as bad as what we when we went 690 in Sydney. That's the worst racetrack here in Australia. Sort of thing. So if we can keep this thing stuck to the track going down it, obviously we should have a little bit more drive as well. What would make you really happy this weekend? Do you have a certain number that would put a smile on your face yeah, after another six ninety? <laughs> there you go, another six. No. How about a six eighty? Huh? Uh, well, yeah, it'd be dream, but you know, we're, we're just uh, with these conditions, we just got to hope that we can back up what we've already done, um, and then go chase them what we have in our heads, what we want to do. So, um, yeah, you know, we'll just see what the first run. You know, hopefully get a few more skids in during qualifying and just see how we go. But you know. It's got some go fast gearing on it now. It didn't have it in Sydney, so who knows? It could overpower the racetrack in that first 60 to 80 feet, or it could go like how I expect it to. So, you know, that's why I'm all out. It was only 193 in Sydney. So. Since you've competed in both countries, what's the biggest difference between pro stock motorcycle racing in Australia and the United States? Obviously, just the professional side of things, you know, like people over there, that, the old hobby racer thing that's going around, you know. <laughs> At the end of the day, people have to make money. It doesn't matter which way you make it. That's, you know, that's life. Um, you know, people put time and effort into their bikes. Unfortunately, we only get four or five races a year, 
and it's just not enough track time to, you know, say we could go out and run those 70s or low 80s pass after pass. But we, we, you know, like uh, prior to when I went 690 a couple of weeks ago, I hadn't ridden the thing in like over six months, you know, and you know, if you can go out there every two weeks, every three weeks, and do runs, do laps, get data, learn more, keep on top of everything, you know, on the tuning side of things as well. You know, like there's no reason why we couldn't do it. We just don't have the rounds sure. to physically do the racing that, you know, the NHRI guys are doing. So. We're going to see you back over in the States? Uh, yes. Excellent. End of the year probably? or uh, I'd, I'd like to think so. Okay. Uh, all depends if I've got both engines ready to rock and roll again. Okay. Um, which the other one will be finished, but this will need to freshen up as well. And whether I ride this bike or someone else's with my engine, we'll just see what happens. Good luck to you. And again, congratulations on that 690. That was a big number Thanks, over here in Australia. So Luke got it done, but could Luke get it done on this particular weekend and win the entire event? There was a very tough field underneath that tent. It's going to be exciting. By far the most unique pro stock motorcycle in Australia is this one because take a look at the power plant. That is not a GS. That is a Suzuki Hayabusa. What is your name, sir? Andrew Badcock, it is, mate. Excellent. Where are you from? I'm um, from Brisbane, Australia, so local. How many years have you been racing? I've uh, been running pro stock since 2004. Wow. So you are not a newcomer, so my question to you... Not in any way. Why the heck the Hayabusa? I love the ingenuity, but yeah. why? We run it like a motorcycle tuning shop here, and we wanted to more showcase something in the shop, what we could do. So we decided to do a, we bought a rolling chassis that was GS based, and we cut the front off the chassis, changed it all, and, and made a high whistle engine fit. How about that? Yeah, so we're slowly making more and more groundwork with it. We had a lot of problems early on with, um, with because we ran a wet sump on it, with an oiling system and tearing parts up, but we've finally cured all those problems, and now we're starting to go forwards. What's your best ET? So, so far I've run a 745. You know, that's not too far behind the leaders. Yeah, yep. And what that you... was a big shut off at that. So we were, we were off the throttle at 6.2 seconds. Okay. For, we've been running a little engine just to test it and prototype it. So we ran a little 1440 and we ran some mid 7.5s with that. So this one we should be able to run. We think eventually we can go 7.2s. But we're hoping if we get a 7.3 out of it by the end of the weekend, we'd be over the moon. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's yep. going to be the key to squeezing that performance out? We've gone fast in the 60 foot and we've been trying to find what gearing the bike likes. Um, so we're trialling a little bit more now. We've just designed and made up this airbox. So we've never had an airbox on it till today. So we're hoping that's going to give us a little bit more as well. But um, literally, if I can if I can get the throttle flat to the other end, I think we'll almost get there. Tell me about some of the other features here in this motorcycle. Yep. I can tell you got a lot of creativity. Yep. So we run obviously we're running on alcohol, we run on methanol. Um, we run a Link ECU, so we run a different different injection system. Um, we run standard throttle bodies, but they are bought out oversize. Okay. Um, we run just it's running on 16 volts, so we have a 16 volt lithium battery, um, a, a berry back pump on it. We've sort of we've been running the back pump and trying that out to see how that works and see how it affects it. But we find the engine seems to breathe really well that it doesn't really benefit that much. Like a GS motor, you turn that on and you feel it accelerate. With these, it doesn't seem to be so much of an issue. You know, they're just so so efficient in what they do. So they help you out with the fuel and the rolls. Is that one of the ways they help the new high boost yep. to try also, to be better? Also, anyone can run alcohol. We can all run all in pro stock in Australia. We can all run four valve engines, and we can run methanol. Wow, that's a big yeah. difference from what goes yeah, on definitely. over the states. Yep. Yes, definitely. Yep. Okay. So yeah, that's a bit of an advantage because we can run a lot cool on cylinder head temperatures and things like that as well. Sure. Um, and it seems to like it at that. With that is really our only issue. We've had a lot of trouble getting cylinder head temperature. We run no water in the engine at all, um, but still we struggle. We have to start early all the time and, and to get up to heat so we can run. Excellent. Well, I wish you the best here this weekend. It's going to awesome. be going to be fun to watch you run. Thank you, man. It's neat to see a Hayabusa out there as well. That really puts the stock in pro stock. Well. Maurice Allen put the smile in 106 because the corrected altitude looked wonderful. Oh, it, ju it just dropped. We're looking at the, that's the corrected altitude. Is that 96 feet? Is this, is this in feet? That's it, we're down to two digits. Oh my gosh. So we have um, potential mine shaft conditions over here, don't we? Q1 Pro Stock Motorcycle, my tip, minus 200. Wow, can't wait to see it. So we were set for this first session, but unfortunately, uh, everything was delayed due to drizzles. Yes, it rains in Australia as well. To entertain the fans on Friday night, they brought out pro stock car up against a super car, they call it. Uh, the fans were really excited for this rivalry. 
if you know a lot about drag racing, if you're in the know, I think you can tell from a mile away who's going to win this one. But the supercars are pretty impressive. And if we took that drag car out on the oval, I think we know who would win. But nonetheless, good old-fashioned little WWE UFC-style showdown. I really got to give it to the folks over there, Thunder 400 Series, that the entertainment value of this event was superb. I'll lay out a little bit here as we fire up the cars and let you enjoy the sweet sounds of four-wheel horsepower. John Force Burnout and a turbo on that car. Excuse me, that is not a pro stock car. I thought at first glance maybe it was, but we've got a big old power adder in that machine. Look at the turnout too. This was Friday night. This was only day one for this event. It's like the NHRA World Finals in Pomona for all these fans in Australia. Australia loves its drag racing, no doubt. And it's always fun to see special side attractions like this. If you know anything about these two cars, please leave it in the comments because I'm sure so many of you know much more than I do. gets the win but I don't think it was the picture perfect display that drag racing fans had hoped for but that's indicative of how difficult this track was in fact folks they were not able to get in that session of pro All stock right, here motorcycle. we are with Troy Thompson and your son you guys are big nitro fans you having a good time oh, I'm loving it absolutely loving it excellent now yeah. I see that you guys even get to travel over to the states yeah. every once in a while right how about that yeah. are you having a good time yeah. who are you rooting for out here Okay, it's going to be a tight battle. Three points. Yeah, no, it's going to be a good battle for the weekend. Who you got, Matheson or Upton, winning this thing? Uh, I'm going to say Upton, I think. <laughs> Who you got? Upton, Jay Upton. Jay Upton, yeah. all right. The fans have spoken. Good luck. Yeah, it was great to catch up with the fans. This is now Saturday morning, guys. That session of Pro Stock Bike was totally rained out. Mitch and I were just loving it. Thanks for the bunny ears, Mitch. Loving the Psycho Drag shirts, though. And we'll catch back up with Katie. We had to be very patient and just wait her turn. Weekends like this can be very frustrating and nagging at the drag strip. But the machine was ready to go, that's for sure. All right, here with Rhett Lockie. Rhett, we got California Katie Sullivan's Pro Stock Motorcycle over here in your homeland, right, of Australia. Correct. This, this is where you're from. Yeah, this is my home track. Yeah, I ran some bikes back here in the 90s, some street cars. Sure. Yeah. Now you are w with us in the United States now, living in California, Chino. So welcome back home. But, you know, it's got to give you a warm, fuzzy feeling to, to ship a motorcycle over from California and get ready to send it down Willow Bank Raceway. Yeah, I mean, I've done it twice with my old bike. I brought it out January 09. Uh, we won that event. Uh, and then we brought it out in 2013. Uh, we top qualified there, but then the event rained out. Unfortunately, it's not looking so good here, but hopefully we'll get one qualifier in today. And uh, hopefully Katie can show the boys how it's done. There you go. And uh, tomorrow looks pretty good for race day. How would you compare the technology over here in Australia to what we see in the United States in Pro Stock Motorcycle? Uh, 
it's the technology is available for sure. I mean, uh, everything's on a smaller budget over here. The guys, you know, there's no full-time races here. But uh, anything that they can get their way, except those things they call Harley Davidsons, which no one can get apparently. So uh, they can get a Buell. There's a Buell here, but it's not here today. I mean, they can buy the, the heads that are available. Of course, uh, they normally won't sell you a finished head. So it usually comes with a, not a finished port or anything like that. So you got to do your own port development, uh, which we've done with Katie's. This is a very old head, which has uh, got our CNC program in it. My cam shots, my block, my pistons. So. Well, you bring up a, a good point here with the, the V-Twins. I'm surprised that I'm not seeing any EBRs or V-Rods over here. It's mainly just Suzuki's. Why don't we see many V-Twins over here? Uh, I think, well, they're a little bit more expensive, but there is a Buell, one Buell here. Um, I don't think you'll see a V-Rod anywhere else besides Vance and Hines. Street Rod now, excuse me. I still call them the V-Rod. Do you think <laughs> anybody could, that's a good question. I mean, do you think anybody could bring a Vance and Hines Street Rod to Australia? <laughs> Not sure. I'd say probably not. That would be pretty wild, huh? Yeah. To see one of Maybe those. Maybe Vance and good. I think it'd be about it. And how about the the EBRs? I mean, they're attainable, right? Yeah, I like that new bodywork for sure. That was a big improvement for them. They seem to pick up some mile an hour with that. But you know, the V twins, they're a full billet engine. They're purposely built for drag racing. The Suzuki still runs the stock cases, which were uh, designed and built in about 1982 to 1984, I believe. We still use those. Um, so that's a great thing about Suzuki's. Uh, people can get more of the parts. Final question for you. What advice did you give California Katie as she begins to get ready to make her first pass in Australia? I don't have to give Katie any advice. She's a great rider. She's better than what I ever was. So it's the I'll same thing. Just a We might be 7,000 miles away from California, but it's still the same game, right? Exactly. Now, I know there's shutdown, though. It's a downward slope, and they say it's a little bumpy. Anything that motorcycle riders... There's, there's a bit of a dip after the finish line. You just kind of, with Katie, she just rolls off, let the engine brake take a little bit, get through the dip and get on the brakes. There's plenty of room. Thanks. When I ran here back in 13, we had to be uh, 60 pounds heavier, 100 cc smaller, and that was tough to pull up, 665 pounds. Well, good luck to you guys. Can't wait to watch it. California Katie, the time is drawing near. How you feeling? Oh man, I'm so ready. It was kind of a bummer yesterday that we didn't get to make a pass, but um, you know, we got to hang out with a lot of cool people and do a lot of cool things, so we're not too disappointed, but hopefully today we can get at least one in before the rain comes. How cool is it to come over here 7,000 miles? You're a bit of a, a star. Everybody's asking for an autograph. They want an autograph from the American Pro Stock Motorcycle Rider. How's that make you feel? You know, it's really touched my heart because there's just been a lot of people and everybody's been so kind to us and it's been fun to get to know everybody and it's just been a great experience. I mean, it stinks that we haven't gotten to make a pass yet, but at the same time, it's been the uh, opportunity of a lifetime out here. There you go. Good luck to you. Yeah, thank you. Putting the body work on. It won't be long now. And a big thanks to California Katie and team for running this CycleDrag.com decal. These teams were all ready, making their double and triple checks, maybe making some tuning adjustments based on the weather change. As you can tell, it's a humid and overcast morning. Dew point, very high. But we hope to button them up and, and get them in, get them down the track. It's frustrating when you have a race of this magnitude and you don't have three full qualifying sessions or four full qualifying sessions for a category like this. You want to give these competitors as many shots as you possibly can at the racetrack. Trevor Burrell and team, a lot of ingenious tuning ability over there with these guys.
Sounds great. Monster cylinder head, 1750 cc. Everything CCs. sounding good for you? Yeah. Big Electron carburetors. Gotta love Pro Stock. It's gotta sound like no other. We got some damp, humid weather. Any big changes because of that, tuning wise? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Not any of that. Okay. Any big uh, tuning changes? Tuning changes? No, no changes. No changes? Just uh, hope it doesn't rain. There you go. Good luck to you and your team. It's going to leave the tune up in it. And these talented individuals are going to make some breakfast. Looks good to me. Finally, if we could keep the rain away, it was time to head up to the line and watch these pro bikes make a rip. Welcome to Australia. We have caught up with the lovely Jamboree girls. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Soraya. Hi, I'm Catherine. Casey. Stephanie. Mitch. <laughs> so, what's it like to be a Jamboree girl? Tell me about what you're doing here. Oh, it's amazing. The atmosphere is so much fun. Honestly, you just can't get it all. Very cool. How about for you? Uh, well, I've worked for Jamboree for many years now. Jamboree is such a good event. Um, so, it's called Contact Drag Racing. There's bait, bikini proms. So, that's an event Excellent. How about for you? You guys enjoy it? Yes, definitely. We're back every year, so can't get enough of it. I know Mitch enjoys it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, girls. We appreciate it. Cycledrag.com is where you can go to see this video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mitch Brown, you are going to get on the mic up in the tower. How excited are you to announce in Australia? They don't even know what's coming. I'll probably get arrested in the first five minutes. Try not to. No, no, no. It's an honor to be able to do it. I'm excited. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Mitch Brown, we headed up to do some announcing. Circuit racing, street machines. Cool to see Mitch get an opportunity to take the mic. There's Luke Crowley taking the mic. After his impressive performance, all the racers getting ready to go. Time to suit up. You know, they were so close to making that hit last night before rain washed it out. And I hate to even say this, but we do have rain in the forecast for this session. Hoping we can hurry up and sneak one in so we can get this field set heading into Championship Sunday tomorrow. Here comes California Katie Sullivan. 7,000 miles she traveled with that motorcycle. Try to make her presence known here in Australia and leave with a gold tree. But she will face a stout field of competitors. Here's a look at the surrounding pit area. Beautiful track, not a lot of paved pits though. Look at it. a lot of the racers utilizing tents and they have to put down different mats. Makes for some good camping, but I know some of the racers with different high-end vehicles do not like being in the dirt. But an again, another one of the luxuries that we get to enjoy in the United States is a lot of the top tracks. But there's certainly our share of tracks in the United States that don't have paved pits. I'd say a lot of them actually have some areas that are just grass. Maple Grove comes to mind. They don't have a complete paved facility. Brainerd, of course. Rockingham does have some grass areas for for pit stations. You really ought to really be set up as a racer to handle that. There's Glenn Wooster. He's set up to hopefully win a championship for him with his Monster Race Products G-Force Wear Group Machine. Good look at California Katie, poised and confident in the lanes early, getting in that proper mental zone. If you've never drag raced before, it's a lot like golfing, sharpshooting, billiards, where you need a lot of concentration. You'll see these racers making practice runs in their minds and meditating and getting into a nice, quiet, comfortable state before a run. We also see a lot of PSI checks going on with crewmen making sure that they have the right amount of air pressure in those giant rear slicks. Ryan Learmonth and the Wise Guy team making their last minute adjustments. Look at the protective back support for Scott White. I like that. Oftentimes these racers are so concerned about weight they don't want to wear a lot of padding, but look how popular California Katie is. Everybody wanted a picture with California Katie. That young lady traveled a long way to compete. 
And how about the love being shown to Cycle Drag? Thank you so much. Good luck, decal. Everybody supporting the CycleDrag.com decals. Thank you, guys. Would like to remind you to please subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube and like CycleDrag.com on Facebook for much more. There's the president of the IHRA, Maurice Allen, chatting it up with Katie. They'll see each other again in Pomona when Maurice comes over to run on the NHRA tour. Katie's fiance, Greg Justice, he rides the Nitro Harley. It had been a weekend of waiting thus far. Time to get things going. Maurice's dad, Peter Allen, part of his crew, a true legend. We'll hear from him in a future video. There's Peter right there. Accomplished a great deal over in Australia. A lot of milestones in history on two wheels for him. There's the Spider-Man bike. The Hayabusa that we saw earlier on. I want to know in the comments right now, who do you guys think will win this race? Out of all the competitors that we've met so far, who will win? And here's some more vaudeville entertainment for you. I love this. The pro wrestling fan in me, the circus fan in me, loves this. I love different wacky things to entertain the fans. When people come out and pay their hard-earned money, you want to give them the best show possible. Look at this, even some perhaps less than stellar dance moves there. But thank you for the effort. Traveling rock show, live music. Mr. Allen, sir, how are conditions looking for this session? I know they were great last night. Conditions are excellent. We're, we're nearly at sea level. Track's tight. It's reading about 450 on the traction meter. Oh, wow. So you got to dial it up and let it rip. How has that affected your tune-up? Yeah, it has a little bit because obviously it's, it's, it's more... It's more of everything, so it's it's more launch RPM, it's uh, it's more clutch because the track's that tight. So obviously it's got a lot of grip. So in order to get some rear wheel speed happening, you know we got to really wind these things up on the two step on the start line and, and let them rip. Good luck. Thank you, mate. Midday Saturday, these racers are all but imploring Mother Nature to please let them make a hit because the skies were getting dark once again. Look at the lanes filling up. Bikes relegated to the back of the pack, of course, just like in the stage, just like with the NHRA. You're going to let the four-wheeled nitro cars go first. That's understandable, but look at this. Helmets coming on, guys. Is it time to finally let these pro-stock bikes loose on famous, iconic, legendary Willow Bank Raceway? Got another question for you in the comments too while we wait for these riders to suit up. Who do you think was the greatest pro stock motorcycle racer and why? Who's the GOAT and why? On CycleDrag.com Facebook the other day we posted our pick, the one and only Dave Schultz. Gotta love Dave and, and gotta believe that if Dave didn't unfortunately pass well ahead of his time, he would have many more NHRA championship victories. Dave did it in an era where he did everything himself. Nowadays, you need so many different team members and specialists. Dave and his wife, Meredith, they traveled around the country. And Dave did it in an area where there were no V-twins. It was simply Suzuki's, Kawasaki's, Yamaha's. Tremendous turnout of fans here at legendary Willowbank Raceway to see the pro bikes or pro stock bikes in action. We kick things off with Daniel Rabinet. Ready to light it up. Nice helmet, nice sticker. Suzuki, Luke Crowley, first man to run a six over in Australia, helping to line them up. And we are set to send motorcycles down the racetrack here at the 52nd running of the Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals. Biggest drag race in the Western Hemisphere here in Brisbane, Australia. Should be a good matchup. Lockie Ireland out first, 026 reaction time. 
Shifts that Suzuki into high gear, top end. 799 to an 839. Many wondering what this track can hold as we bring up Scott White. Scott White will oppose Australia's version of the Spider-Man. This is Andrew Badcock and the Suzuki Hayabusa machine. Pretty cool to see a Suzuki Hayabusa late model in pro stock. Don Schumacher set out to build one a few years ago. Scott White lights it up. And here comes the Spider-Man. Bump spot around in 839 to make this field. These competitors hoping to dip into the sixes, but again, a big difference in tracks in terms of the pro bikes over in Australia and the NHRA pro stock motorcycles in the United States. Also, these competitors do not have nearly as many events, so they don't have the data, they don't have the testing, some of them not as well funded as the teams we see. So because of that, a little bit of a performance disparity. But they're not that far behind. I can tell you that. A lot of these bikes would go right in the 690s, 680s. Side by side pro stock hole shot. Keep an eye on the top end of the racetrack. How about a 747 left lane? 732 for Scott White, the veteran. Nice pass. And here comes Mr. President, Maurice Allen. The man who went fast last year at the NHRA Winter Nationals in Kelowna. And of course I call him Mr. President because he's the president of the IHRA Australia doing a great job. The fans loving the action from Cycle Drag. Thanks for that. Let's watch Maurice blast down this drag strip. Maurice looking for a solid number to get into this show. How about a 733.9? That'll put Maurice in the number three spot. And here she comes all the way from California, the one and only California, Katie Sullivan. She'll take on Luke Crowley. This is going to be a great side-by-side -side drag race. And I hear Mitch Brown announcing. Let's listen. That's not Mitch. I know got a lot of new bits on this bike. It's always new bits, right? Yeah. Nice to hear Mitch up in the broadcast booth. So we'll see what California Katie can do with her Vance and Hines cylinder head two valve, Brett Lockheed motor. Looks like maybe a little bit of trouble in the burnout box there for Katie. We'll see how she fares. There's got to be some anxiety and some nerves for Katie. She traveled 7,000 miles. She's waited four days to make this one pass. She's a true consummate professional. She's been on NHRA tour for about seven, eight years now. Spot starts, doesn't run the full tour, but runs the races that she can. Luke always tough, tough on the tree, one of the toughest racers out there. Katie tasked with a very intimidating goal to try to compete. Nice hole shot. Both racers watch the scoreboard. Katie, a 736. How about Luke, 710, 192. Score this one for Team Australia. Let's watch this launch in slow motion. Luke comes on the two-step. Slaps out the clutch. Looks like Katie's bike may have hesitated or spun a little bit on the line. Luke hooking up pretty good. Remember, I do invite you to watch a video that I did with Michael Beland all about tuning and about how they put the correct different adjustments in these bikes based on what the laptop tells them. If you miss by a thousandth here or there, you won't run the number that you hope. So many different adjustments you can make on these motorcycles. It's not necessarily who has the most power, but can who, who can apply that power to the racetrack efficiently and effectively. 
Next pair coming up, Glenn Wooster. Ryan Learmoth. And a little bit of added pressure too because should the rain move in and this be the one and only qualifier, well you certainly don't want to be the individual who does not qualify. Right now bump spot at an 839. That's Daniel Rabnett. So both these competitors need an 839 or better to get solidly in the show. It's very important for Glenn. Oh no problems Glenn! Problems, Glenn. Wooster could be in big trouble here. 750 all. Oh, Wooster goes to a 904. He will not make the field as of now. What happened? Let's take a second look in slow motion. Look at the tire shake. Wooster experiencing something not right on that Suzuki. That would do it for the first round of pro stock or pro bike qualifying. And the news went from bad to worse for Glenn Wooster because guess what? It started to sprinkle and the forecast was not optimistic. We kept an eye on a radar and it turned into a real debacle because ladies and gentlemen, that would be it for qualifying one of those weekends. And what that means is that would be it for Glenn Wooster demoralizing championship hopes down the drain not qualified that brings us to championship Sunday the Sun was out there was hope and optimism in the air for many to hopefully cut a light on that Christmas tree and score a big win but our condolences to Glenn Wooster welcome drag racing fans to Willow Bank Raceway we're about an hour from Brisbane Australia and take a look at this crowd already for this massive event it is the 52nd annual Winter Nationals. It's early Sunday, they're already here. We've got a ton of motorcycle action to show you. Stay tuned. Let's get you right into round number one of eliminations. These competitors are ready to go with only one qualifier. And boy, Katie Sullivan didn't get the qualifying effort she had hoped for. We'll see how this one shakes out. First pair coming up, near lane. That is Lockheed Ireland. Taking on Scott White, oh no. Red light start for Lockheed. Scott will advance to the next round. How quick can he go? Oh man, Locky threw one away. Scott goes 760, 758. Locky out of here via the red light. Here comes California Katie Sullivan. Katie qualified the number four spot. She will oppose. Andrew Babscox, Suzuki Hayabusa, the Spider-Man in the number five spot. Katie qualified with a 736, Babcock with a 747. <laughs> Katie looking to pick up a bunch. She came here to run a six, but in her first and only qualifying hit, she was far off the six second zone. Let's see what Katie can do. Trying to make that 7,000 mile trip pay off. Nice hole shot, California Katie. The Spider-Man in trouble. Top end of the racetrack, watch the scoreboard. 701, California Katie, a big step up. That's low, elapsed time of the weekend. 701, California Katie, let's take another look at this epic pass. What a whole shot, California Katie. So Sullivan advances, now Ryan Learmont trying to do the same. With Wooster out of the championship chase, Learmont controls his own destiny. If he can make it to the final, uh-oh, problems on the tree next to Maurice Allen. This particular track was having problems all weekend and they had to restart the tree several times. Two greens. Allen and Learmoth waiting patiently while they reset it. Allen moving back in. Maurice Allen drills a whole shot. Ryan Learmoth though, he's determined to win this championship. Top end of the racetrack. 
724, 181 miles an hour. Maurice Allen slows to an 824 at 138. Let's take another look in slow motion as these pro bikes blast off the line. You can see Allen with a slight advantage. But Learmoth able to run him down on the big end. Learmoth advances. He's in the semifinals. That brings up Daniel Rabnot. Ready to light it up. Rabnot qualified eighth. The bad news for him is he has to face your number one qualifier, Luke Crowley. Far lane. Luke went a 7-10 in qualifying, trying to keep pace with Katie Sullivan. Can he go into the sixes here? Luke Crowley, top end. How about a 7.04192 for Luke Crowley? Only three hundredths of a second away from California Katie. Let's watch this beautiful hole shot by Mr. Six Seconds himself, Luke Crowley. Bike comes back on the bars and continues its forward progress. Nice 60 foot time. Nice 704 for Luke Crowley. And that'll do it for round number one. We're down to our semi-finals. Only four racers remain. Let's give you a look around this amazing facility. Lots of entertainment. Oh, check out uh, Batman and Robin. Dancing to a little live rendition of Rihanna. Rihanna's Yellow Diamonds, gotta love that. I'm telling you, over in Australia, they get an A-plus for entertainment. They kept this crowd thoroughly entertained. And it was packed. Lots of food vendors, lots of food choices. Look at the fans, look at the spectator turnout, amazing. What an audience. And what do they sell over in Australia? How about American hot dogs? Look at this jam-packed crowd. Is drag racing alive and well in Australia or what? Thunder 400. The only downfall is I almost saw a fight. Hey, it reminded me of being back home in Pittsburgh. Thankfully, there wasn't a fight. I was going to call the authorities if I had to. The funny thing in Australia, when you say straighten him out, uh, the woman was saying sort him out, sort him out. The woman was mad at the guy in the red shirt. Apparently, he said something, and next thing you know, escalation. Thankfully, there was no need to sort him out by the gentleman in the white sunglasses. All was well. No punches thrown. We got to the bottom of it. He was saying, did you speak to my lady? Did you speak to my lady? I think in Australia that means, did you talk to her in an insulting way? Big step up for California. Katie Sullivan, you pick up three tenths, almost go into the sixes. Where did that come from? Man, we just, yesterday we kind of made a bad pass and I, I think part of it was that I, I kind of had to get the nerves out of being here and being on a new racetrack, but um, the guys did a really good job today of uh, uh, making some changes from yesterday, and uh, we just we made a good run, and I, I think we have a little bit of room for improvement, so we're really excited for the next round. The changes, what, what were they? You said you had to pull a little clutch out of it? Uh, it was really, it was just too aggressive. We had to um, pull some clutch out of it. We had to take some timing out of first gear, and um, basically, we always live by the rule that smooth is fast, and so we tried to go back to what we know and uh, just make her happy and smooth, and uh, she liked it. So you're calming it down a little bit, maybe finding some differences with the tracks over here compared to what you run on NHRA, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, a track's a track, and this one is good. I mean, um, you know, we haven't had a problem with it. It was a little bit bumpy going through the shutdown, but that's just that's drag racing. I mean, there's a lot of tracks we go to back home that have bumpy shutdowns, so you just uh, you prepare for it. And um, yeah, this track is great. The people here at, uh, at Willow Bank have done a great job pepping this track, and um, we're, we're extremely happy to be here and, and uh, stoked about it. Uh, going to round two. Good. Keep it safe. Last question. What's more important, winning this race or going into the sixes? Uh, for me, definitely, I would say winning this race. There but we go. would like to have a six second pass, so we'll see what happens. Good luck. Thank you. California Katie getting ready for round two after that impressive 701.
Mitch, you've never looked better in a cycle drag shirt. I noticed you, you've been lifting, man. You're yeah, I like the, over these, here. these custom shirts, these cycle drag shirts. I thought you were some young muscular guy. Now, oh, I know they have uh, implants built into it. It's them. all in the fit, man. It's yeah, pro it things. Pro things, apparel, great yeah, shirts. Nice. Oh, I love it, man. You look good in it. Thanks for repping over in Australia. Thank you. Big run coming up for you, Ryan. Give me the scenario. I'm hearing you win this round, you win the championship. Yeah, it's right, Jack. No pressure. <laughs> but um, yeah, we win the round and that we win the championship. So we'll try and do our best. You know, um, we've got a fast bike and Scotty's got a, a new, new engine and everything like that. He's trying to work it out, but it's got the power to outrun us as well. So we'll just, we'll just do the best we can and hopefully we get to the end and turn the win light on. What type of tune up do you put in her? Oh, the hot one. <laughs> there you go. Good luck, man. We'll let you focus. He's looking to win his championship. He needs to win this round. So there you have it. A huge twist of fate. Learmoth with the chance to win a championship. Hey, there's Chris Matheson in the lanes as they bring the top fuel motorcycles right in behind the pro bikes. It is semi-final time here. The stakes are high. You know that that man near lane, Scott White, would like nothing more than to advance to a final, as well as look at the matchup behind. You guys ready for a championship run here? Good luck. After Learmoth and White, it'll be Katie Sullivan and Luke Crowley in the semifinals. Take a look at this crowd. Learmoth focusing his championship hopes riding on this pass right here. Scott White, far lane, he's your number two qualifier, ran a 732 at 177. Learmoth was 755 at 184 in qualifying. Can Learmoth pull out the huge upset to become pro bike champion? He's got a tough customer in the other lane. The 868 Suzuki TL body of Scott White. This motorcycle's got 720, 17 potential. Here we go. Oh, problems for White. A red light. It's over. Learmoth is going to win the championship. How quick can Learmoth go? 713, 185 miles an hour. What happened to Scott guys. White? Congratulations. How's it feel to be the champion? It's been a lot of long time coming and a lot of hard work. And thank you to the rest of the Pro Stock boys. They are brilliant. Congratulations. You never know what will happen. Glenn Wooster entered this event as the favorite. He did not qualify. Learmonth qualified six. He's now your champion. We've got some serious unfinished business here. The two most talked about riders heading into this event. Luke Crowley off of Australia's first ever six, taking on California Katie Sullivan, who stepped up huge in round number one with a 701. We've yet to see a six second pass. This event, we could see one here. It may take a six to win. Let's watch. Oh, nice short time. California Katie, Luke giving chase. Watch those scoreboards, California Katie into high gear. Six, 96, 191 miles an hour. What an upset, California Katie. Hey boys, how about that? How about that 696, huh? Unbelievable, man. She's in the driver's seat for this event now, too, huh? Yeah, this is it, man. We came all the way out here. We're having a blast. Everybody's treating us real, real good. I'd like to thank uh, Forest Wear Group and Circle Motorsports for helping us to come out here. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome, man. Everybody's treating us so good. We're having so much fun. We've been waiting to come out here, and we're having a blast, man. She came to run a six. She did. Congrats, man. Thank you. There you go.
What a step up for Katie, 696, incredible. Tough break out here for Scott White. Not exactly sure what happened. What happened? On the toe back on the last run, oh. someone jammed it in here. We freed it up. I don't think we freed it up very well. Sorry to hear. Transmission problems for Scott White. Tough break. I got to show you the unique race hauler of Scott White, though. Check this out. This is great. And I think back to what... Big, long burnouts there. I think back to what my good friend Joe Koenig told me a long time ago. Joe Koenig won an NHRA championship with Gino Scali, and he said, man, we really don't need this big semi-rig that we have. We really just need a big brown van like the old days. Scott White's proven that that's all you need is a van to go pro stock motorcycle race. And look, he's got his sleeping quarters. He's got space for his motorcycle. That's pretty cool. And he pulled it right up to the line to help retrieve his motorcycle. Well, ladies and gentlemen, now we are set for an epic final. California Katie. There's Mitch Brown talking to Chris Matheson. The anticipation building. Go ahead. Well, that didn't look rehearsed. California Katie making that trip all the way across the ocean pay off 696. Where did that come from? You know, uh, Red's done a really great job tuning this bike, and it, it took us a little while to work up to it, but um, we're here and we're having fun. And, uh, you know, um, we kind of had to make a lot of uh, big changes. We just kind of had to uh, make her soften it up and make it happy. But um, it's awesome. We're going to the final against our good buddy that just won the championship, so it doesn't get much better than that. How much would it mean to win this thing? It would mean a lot to me. It already just being the final feels pretty surreal. So uh, to win it would be a absolutely incredible. Good luck. And with that, we were set. Learmoth, the new champ, California Katie, looking for a pro stock motorcycle win for the ages. All right, Ryan, you got the championship. One down. Now a huge final round against California Katie. How you feeling? Yeah, feeling good. Feeling really good because the championship was the one that was getting the nerves going. And now we got that sealed. That's really good. We can relax and just enjoy the final. She went to 696. Your career best is 707. You feel like you really got to hop this thing up to get her? Yeah, we've gone after it. Gone after the tune up. And we'll see what we can do. I don't think we'll go that quick, but we'll give her a run for her money, hopefully. How's that Mitch Brown monster cylinder head doing for you? Yeah, awesome, man. Never had any problems with it. They make it Congratulations, Rhett. You're in the final. Thanks, mate. What do you think? Any predictions here? Uh, I'd just like to finish off what we started. That 696 was pretty impressive. Yeah, I think if we get a little bit more. The track's pretty bumpy in fifth and sixth gear down there. Let's spin the tire up crazy. So, How do you accommodate for that? You can't really. That's <laughs> what it is. Now for the final, did you tune it up or leave it alone? No, we took a little bit more clutch out of it. It's still a bit tight. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we get a bit of 60 foot. Good luck. Thanks, mate. An entertaining, epic battle to end the season. Who you got? California Katie Sullivan wants this victory so bad. And so does that man, Ryan Learmont, a newly crowned champion. But he wants more. Everybody wants to leave with that golden tree. Who will do it here? at the biggest drag race in the Western Hemisphere. It is final time from the Gulf Western Oil Winter Nationals. Look at this jam-packed crowd hanging around late into the evening on Sunday to watch the finals.
J.D. Sullivan and Ryan Learmoth waiting patiently, trying to keep their composure. If you've ever competed in this sport, you know when you get into a high-profile round like this, it is so hard to stay calm and stay composed. And finally, the motorcycles come to life. Here we go. Pro Bike Final from the Winter Nationals. Who you got, guys? Katie or Ryan? Two fast Suzukis, Team USA up against Team Australia. Here comes Katie. Remember, Katie struggled in qualifying, could only muster a 736, stepped up to a 701 on race day, and then an unbelievable 696, the quickest run ever in competition in Australia. Ryan Learmonth also had a big step up into the 7-0's last round. This one could easily come down to a whole shot. Plus, you gotta believe the track is not as good as it was. Let's watch, guys, final time. Motorcycles creeping into the staging beam. On the two steps, out come the clutch. Side by side we go, a pair of fast Suzukis trying to capture the win, top end of the racetrack. Katie Sullivan, California Katie wins it with a seven flat, 191 miles an hour. Let's take a second look. Katie on the two step rev limiter lets out the clutch. You can tell it disrupted her body just a little bit that may have hurt her 60 foot a little bit but not too bad because Katie still rips off a seven flat to take home the win her crew loves it an emotional moment no doubt for Greg Justice and the entire team hugs all around the sweet taste of victory the sweet euphoria all the hard work paying off congratulations guys Rhett Lockheed with an interview here in his home country. Hey, score one for Team USA, man. How's it feel? You guys came, you did it. Oh, man. You got off to a tough start, but you did it. It was a tough start, man. We had a issue with the kill switch, last minute call for the, for the elimination round, and uh, we got it together. And, oh man, she's been running so well this weekend. She did an awesome job, and it's just, it's, just, it's so surreal. I don't even feel like we're here, but uh, it's, it's such a good feeling. We just can't wait to celebrate. Congratulations. What an unbelievable moment there for Katie Sullivan, Greg Justice, and team as we get a look high atop Willowbank Raceway. Team USA, coming to Australia, getting it done. Congratulations, California Katie. The weekend got off to a little bit of a rough start, but boy, you overcame. You're leaving here with an ET record, a speed record, and the gold tree. Tell me about it. It has been so amazing. So in the first round, we had kind of a scary moment where right before we were going to run, broke my uh, kill switch in half and uh, so I was panicked and running around trying to find anybody or that could help me, red, anyone and uh, uh, we had help and people ran all the way back to the pit to get what we needed to make the pass so it started off rocky but uh, we got better you know every time we went down the racetrack we made strides and my team worked really hard and a bunch of people helped to get us here so it's been the greatest weekend it's a weekend we'll never forget. Well it's great talking to you I know you you were you were in tears. I saw you. You were probably happier happier than if you won on your Nitro Harley, right? Well, describe to me the emotions when you see your fiance go out there and win this thing. It was she did an amazing job. She, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better job than she did. It was awesome. I mean, she 
Um, I mean, it was just so nice to see going on every pass and the wind light coming on. And, and uh, you know, like she said, we had a couple of struggles and we only had one qualifying pass to get data on and then go out there and we made it work. And Red, Red crew chief here, man, he did an awesome job. And everybody, but it helped us out. It was Red, how's it feel? You know, we, you're you're an adopted Californian now. Yeah. And you come back over to Australia and you get it done. No, uh, Jack, feels great. You know, this is my home track in Australia. Been coming here for nearly 30 years. Got some records here still from back in the 90s. So to bring Katie here and show the boys how it's done was perfect. <laughs> Congratulations to you. How'd the weekend go for you? All good? Oh, it was great. I couldn't ask for anything better than to come watch my sister race here and see her win. That's the best part. Excellent. Yeah. And we have Mitch, Team USA, yep. getting it done. No, all day. Working for Cycle Drag this Thank weekend. Thank you so much. Look at all these individuals. Seven thousand miles we traveled. I don't. I don't know what you guys think, but the hospitality over here, the track, everything was first class. Yeah. It was so much fun. Everybody in the United States, if you get a chance to travel to Australia, you got to do it. Thirteen hour plane ride. Yep. You know, and I want to thank, and I know they do too as well. Clint from Foursquare. He's the one that really created the opportunity for us to come over here. So a big thank you to him and Trevor Burrell as well. Thank you, everybody. It was a lot of fun. Let's look at Katie one more time, and let's say we can hear it for California, Katie! I don't think Katie could smile any harder. Congratulations, guys. I really hope you enjoyed our feature here and our look at Pro Bike in Australia, aka Pro Stock Motorcycle. Do make sure you're subscribed to Cycle Drag on YouTube and you like CycleDrag.com on Facebook. Please leave us a comment. Leave us your feedback, your reaction to this video. This is one of our longer videos. Really hope you liked it, like I said. And we will have more coming from Australia. Stay tuned to this channel. We met a lot of great motorcyclists over there. And there was a lot of compelling, interesting action. But congratulations once again to the young lady who came all the way from California and took home the golden tree.